sustain us in these difficult times that we live. I want to welcome all of you that are already here, those who will join us along the way, perhaps those that may view this live session further on in the day at some other time. We give God praise and we give him thanks for this opportunity. I want to ask you please if you can share, click the share button invite somebody else into this session in Jesus name Amen maybe what we discuss today with God's help would be a blessing and a source of inspiration to them as well here at VPI we honor God we celebrate people we aspire to impact the world Amen and we are ably led by our Bishop Clive Porter senior Amen and um, our watchwords are honoring God, <laughs> celebrating people, changing lives, and impacting the world. And this, I hope, amen, is what this ministry has been doing and what it means to all of you who join us here religiously every time we have a session. And um, this morning... I want to discuss a matter that is pertinent and it has really been driven by recent events, I confess. Amen. Um, and I hope that we can glean some 
strength and some inspiration and some direction. Amen. We are talking about debt this morning. Our theme is debt is an enemy. Debt is an enemy. Bless the Lord. Amen. So let's take a little bit of this and then we'll come back and talk about that matter. Times, the nice times, the right times, and even the fun times. Never used to sing the songs with the fun rhymes. The good old days when not the deaf on the front line. All the babies and the sucklings when we come together. And so the wise and all that say we feel love one another. Not religion really or a roof for preachers I we prefer. Free the youth and boy are so far. Father God help, Father God help. We are the youth and the struggling and the ghetto in the slum. No help, Father God help. Just give your life to Jesus Christ, now watch them by duty Love your family, love your neighbors, love your enemy That is how the Father tell us it's supposed to be You think so wicked, Mr. about, well you know see wicked yet When you hear the trumpet sound, make sure you're not going to And when you hear the roller car, make sure you're not going to get it Make Jesus Christ be up your place, so Father God help, Father God help We are the youth, and we are the struggling, and the ghetto, and the slum, no help Yes, 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 yes. We look for help from him, yeah? It is in him that we live and move and have our being. We can do nothing without him. Good morning to all of you again and welcome, 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 welcome to another uh, morning devotion. It's a very rainy day here in Tobago. Amen. Bless the Lord. I don't know what, what it's like where you are. But we give God praise, amen, for the rain, amen. We give him praise for the sun. We give him praise for the weather, amen. Bless the Lord. Everything has its purpose in the earth. We bless God for you, amen. Carleen, good morning. Uh, Marlene, good morning and welcome. Cheryl, good morning. Uh, Louis, good morning. Welcome. Melissa, good morning. Neva, good morning and welcome. Canis, good morning. Angela, good morning. Welcome. Laura. Good morning, welcome. Marissa, good morning and welcome. Evelyn, good morning, welcome. Royston, good morning, welcome. Uh, Doro, uh, Doro, good morning, how are you doing? God bless you. Uh, Joy, good morning and welcome. Trista, good morning, welcome. Uh, Denise, good morning. Lady Marlene Felix, good morning. Donna, good morning, welcome. Avril, Good morning and welcome, Josiah. Good morning, welcome, Lady Bacchus. Good morning, welcome, 
happy to see you as always uh jason good morning and welcome shala morning welcome god bless you so happy to see you uh nadine good morning lydia good morning oswin good morning monica good morning to you amen viv my brother good morning happy to see you amen leonilda good morning diamond good morning god bless you welcome 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 amen june good morning um brendale i hope i'm pronouncing this right brendale good morning god bless you and welcome lawrence morning bless you amen if this is your first time um brendale i think this is your first time we welcome everybody let's welcome brendale to our session today amen god bless you malika good morning and welcome welcome god bless you guys thank you so much for joining us this morning you certainly could have been doing something else with your time amen showing my bridging good morning good morning good morning thank you lord thank you jesus amen uh this morning i as i indicated to you earlier i want to engage a particular conversation and i confess events of the last 24 hours uh impacts what i'm going to discuss today um the gospel fraternity in trinidad and tobago and in the region as a matter of fact has been thrown into mourning since yesterday by the passing of our brother and friend jamie thomas and um for the last two and a half decades uh, at least his name is synonymous with gospel activities in trinidad and tobago and in the region as a whole i myself as have had many opportunities and many interface uh moments with him he has come to our church on more than one occasions we have executed events together we have um graced many a stage together i have had several uh interviews with him at different radio stations and so on and i consider him a friend and i know that he is a friend of many 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 um and you know our to just say condolences it, sometimes those things really don't don't hit home because when you lose a loved one it is it is it is it is it is, it is a very difficult uh matter to reconcile and um we continue to pray for his wife and for family members and friends we pray for the family at 107 and all of that and one can only imagine the pain of such a loss in this time and season when there are so many other things happening and um you know i i i thought about it I, it was a very sobering and somber day for me yesterday and i sat down and i thought it is not the first time that i have lost a friend it is not the first time that a young uh, vibrant engaging individual has passed on and i have had these conversations with myself before i have had these contemplations many a times but again amen I, I i spent the entire day yesterday for or most of the day just thinking and and trying to to reconcile the reality and i'm sure you can identify with it if you have lost somebody that is dear to you if you have lost a friend you have lost a colleague a loved one i'm sure that you can reconcile and you can identify with the pain of such a loss and 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 the many questions that arise and and the time when you need to hear God the most, you hear him the least, and so on. And I wanted to just have a practical conversation with you about death this morning. My theme is, 
Death is an enemy. Death is an enemy. And we need to start there. We need to have the conversation from that perspective. And, um, and I, I trust that the Lord will help us. Father, we, we give you thanks and we give you praise for the opportunity to sit around the table of your word. I thank you for everybody that is present and for those who may uh, join the conversation along the way, those who may view it at another time. May the words that we discuss, the, 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 the issues be inspirational, informative, and, 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 and perhaps even delivering. In the name of Jesus Christ, we trust and depend upon you to help us in this time in Christ's name. Amen and amen. One verse of the scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 26. And it says this. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. First Corinthians 15, 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. My brothers and sisters, I think it is useful for us to maybe just, you know, kind of do a, 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 a definition and um and 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 of of of, of that and, and stuff and, and we, we all knew we all know most of us I should say know where death began. Amen and it, it began of course for the benefit of those who, who are leery about it in the book of Genesis chapter two and verse seventeen it began over there in the Garden of Eden. You would remember as God indicated to our four parents, set them in an environment and provided all the necessary resource in that environment for their sustenance. And God gave them some rules of engagement. And God specifically outlined to them things that they should engage in and things that they should not engage in. And of course, and God also indicated that if they were to, you know, he didn't just tell them, do this and not do that. He, he gave them additional information that if you do this, this is what is going to happen. If you do that, that is what is going to happen. And he did say that if there was a violation of his word, of his principles and his, of his teaching, he specifically told them what to eat and what not to eat, where to eat and where not to eat from. And he said, if you were to do this, if you were to go contrary, if you were to eat of that particular tree, you are going to die. Amen. I made the point on Sunday in our conversation that God did not say, I am going to kill you. God said, you will kill yourself. In other words, it is suicidal to go contrary to my instruction. That is what God in essence was saying. Amen. Bless the Lord. And then after they would have done that, we saw that death had other implications other than the physical termination of life. Glory to God. Amen. Bless God. So, we understand when, when the word death is used, amen, from, from, from the, the, the context of God, it, it, it means, of course, to die physically. But it has implications of not just the person dying, but also the place was dying as well. Amen. God told them that you're going to you're going to die, and 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 they did in fact die at some point. We get the sense that if sin did not come in, if they did not make that kind of choice, that they would have continued to live. We get the sense that the only time death could have taken hold is if and when there was a violation. So if there was no violation, life would have continued. We get that sense. Amen. Bless the Lord. So we see how by way of definition, by way of definition, amen, that death is a cutting off. It is a, excuse me, a removal of life. Bless the Lord. 
Amen. But not just for your person. Amen. So when you die, when you die, it is not just you dying physically and, you know, going to the great beyond. Amen. Not just your person. And that has also a lot of implications because when you die as a person, everything that you have remaining in you dies as well. Whether they be ideas, whether they be decisions that you would have wanted to make, whether there be a purpose that you had, something that you wanted to accomplish, everything dies with you. Amen. Bless God. Some people are able to pass on some of the things that they would like to do and hopefully somebody else after them will do it. But what I'm saying in essence, when you die, your person, everything dies with you. Amen. Bless God. And then, not just a person, but the place, the environment. I don't know if you've seen it, because in the Adam and Eve scenario, God told them that when this death is not just for you physically, it is also the dying of the place, dying of your generation after you. Amen. That is why death is upon us today, because of the mistake of our foreparents. But God also told them that the environment around you, Amen. Blessed with the environment around you. The earth will be cursed. Amen. Because of your action. That there will be pain and hardship as a result. Amen. Of this death. So the place is impacted. And I'm telling you that when you die, not only the person die, but the place, the place, the environment, the space that you occupy is also impacted by your passing. Amen. And, and this is a general statement I am making. Notice Amen. How death impacted, amen, many of us that were not even born. All of us, we are not even born. We were seminally present in Adam and Eve, generations to come. We were, amen, on a trajectory to die because of the decisions of our four parents. And I'm telling you, amen, bless God, that when you die, even now, as a physical person, people, your offspring, those that are connected to you, die amen as well amen relationships die emotions die and so on amen you understand what i'm saying there is a context of dying that takes place amen when an individual dies amen so it's not just you the person but the place the environment that you are in glory to god notice what what paul writes paul says that death is an enemy glory to god now now when, when we say an enemy what does we mean what do we mean an enemy is someone who hates you or means you evil. An enemy is somebody who hates you, means you evil. An enemy is an assassin. An enemy is a betrayer. An enemy is a competitor, is a murderer, is an attacker, an invader, a prosecutor. Amen. This is what an enemy, these are some of the, some of the definitions of an enemy. And this is what Paul says, that death is one who hates you. Death is somebody who means you evil. Death is an assassin. Death is a betrayer. Death is a competitor. Death is a murderer. Death is an attacker. Death is an invader. Death is a prosecutor. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I want you to make, get that in your mind. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Death, death is not... Amen. Bless God on a mission to make you feel good. Death is the enemy. Amen. Death is the enemy of humankind. It is the enemy of your soul. Glory to God. Amen. 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 It is an enemy. And we have to start there. Start there understanding. Amen. Bless God. And treat death as that. Amen. That it is an enemy. Glory to God. We see and deal with death every day. We deal with death all the time. But we must never ever. Forget that death is an enemy. Glory to God. Amen. So, so, so we've, 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 we kind of try to look at that by way of definition. Amen. What death is, what death represents. Amen. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Amen. Bless God. To bring hardship and pain and distress. Amen. Some of us never recover from people dying in our lives. Amen. Bless God. Dependent on how close the relationship is. Death is an enemy. Death, my brothers and sisters, is an enemy. Glory to God. Amen. Bless the Lord. And then, so, the fact that if you are dealing with an enemy, 
couple these are the two things that, that I'm going to discuss here are connected to that. Then is there any defense? Is there any defense? Can we honestly defend ourselves from debt? <laughs> can we defend ourselves from debt? Amen. Can we? Can we? Amen, amen. Well, I, I, I want to be presumptuous. Uh, well, not presumptuous, but I want to be... Uh, what's the word I want now? I, I, I want to be engaging. I want to be engaging. I want to be engaging. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Because, you see, there's a perspective. People say, you know, well, you know, we have to die at some point. So they, they live this kind of nonchalant way. And so on. Sometimes people see hardships taking place they see stuff happening to people and their conclusion is well you know that is that has been prophesied you know people see like like when, when when countries are going through certain hardships like even when we were collecting stuff and doing re our relief effort for saint vincent there are some people had some weird approaches and saying where well, the bible prophesied that and so on so that is god work and them kind of things there and 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 i think that people use those things as an excuse to not be engaging. And, and the, the, the lack of engagement is selective. Let me explain what I mean. Now, people might say, well, that happening and that's supposed to happen. But you know, if somebody close to you is dying, you see them in a situation dying, you will do your best to try and save them. You see your child drunk and you will try to save your child. You see your child in jeopardy. You see a friend, somebody close, you will try to save them. You understand what I'm saying? But then, but then, if it doesn't come home close, if it is not connected to you necessarily, sometimes, sometimes people have a kind of, 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 of insensitive disconnect with that reality. Amen, 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 amen. Bless the Lord. But, but can, we, can we defend ourselves from debt? Well, I, <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Can we, can we, can we? Amen. Bless the Lord. Now, in the book of the psalm, Psalm 90 and verse 10 says that the average age that a man should live, man as in the generation, mankind, is 70 years, right? 70, 70. And then he said, by reason of strength, 80. So that is the average that the Bible says that a man will live or can live. Notice it. Eh? This is not necessarily God saying, hey, after you live 80 and 80, I am going to kill you. This is the average. This is this is based on the on the effects and the implications that sin has had over the over the over the, the, the generations. The average age, because men have begun to die, the average age. But we still see. That children are dying um, at childbirth. We see children victims of abortion, stillbirth. We see chronic illnesses killing children. We see parents burying children so often. We see young people, their lives snuffed out and so on. Some of them hardly getting to anywhere close to three scores and ten. Because death is ever with us. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if sometimes we accept debt too much that we don't take enough caution, hear me well, hear me well, to defend ourselves against it. Now, the Bible teaches that it is appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment in one place. It also teaches in another place. I think that appointment is, teached, is taught in Romans. Paul teaches that in Romans. And then in Thessalonica, in, in Thessalonians, I'm sorry, he teaches that there is such a thing which the Christians call the rapture. When the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the trump of God and the voice of an archangel and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet him. Amen. So there is no contradiction really in the scripture. Right? Generally speaking, right? The appointment of mankind is 
death once and then after death judgment. But it is also saying that Christ's eminent return, at his return, there will be some people alive. I want you to understand this Bible is not confusing itself. There will be some people alive with that in that event that is called the rapture. Amen, 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 amen. So I believe that if we are on a quest to defend ourselves from death, amen, bless God. Because I must tell you that the word, when God said to them in Genesis uh, 2 and 17, that you shall die, the word die there, move, is the, is the Hebrew word. It means to die prematurely as well, prematurely. Die before your time. Some people say you can't die before your time. I don't necessarily agree with that. Amen. Bless God. Amen. Because you can take certain actions that endanger yourself and put your life at, in jeopardy. Remember, death is an enemy. Is an enemy. Death is trying to kill you. Death is seeking every opportunity available to him to come and to snuff out your life. You understand? So, you understanding this, you have to be aware. There must be an awareness that, A, that death is trying. Because you are aware, because of your awareness that death is not for you to just sit back and, re and, and, and accept it when it comes. You understand what an enemy is. Thank you, Jesus. You are aware that every day you get up, amen, death is trying its best to kill you. Thank you, Jesus. Are you understanding? You go to sleep at night. You are aware death is trying to kill you. There is some plot. There is some scheme. Death is using people. Death will use situations. Death will use diseases. Death will use all kinds of things to snuff out your life. He is an enemy. And you have to be aware of that. You have to be aware of that. And then your awareness, thank you, Jesus, your awareness must drive your actions. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Actions. Now, you have to be smart. You have to be smart. You have to be, you have to be, 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 be uh, uh, cunning. You, you have to be aware. You have to be uh, 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 intelligent. Thank you, Lord. As it relates to how you live. Because now you understand that they're trying to kill you. So you do everything in your power. Amen. Bless God to defend yourself against it. How? Let me just give you a couple of things. Lord Jesus, help me here today. So, death can take you out through sickness. But yes, sickness. So, you may find that in your family, in your lineage, that some of your family members have fallen prey to death through a particular disease. Hypertension. High blood pressure. Diabetes, heart disease, uh, uh, cancer. You may see these things in your lineage. Amen. Are you hearing me? So you see that. You are aware. So now because you are aware, you have to take some action. Thank you, Lord. Because, you see, information is power. What you don't know can hurt you. Thank you, Jesus. So now, amen, you are aware. So you have to do your regular checkups. You have to do regular checkups. Check to see what's going on in your body regular. That is part of the defense mechanism. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? You're walking with God. You're trusting God. You're walking by faith. But you must take action also commiserate to the defense that you want to put up against that. So you're checking. You're checking it out. Amen. You have to see if there are certain foods and things you have to stay away from. All those things are actions that you take to defend yourself against death. Thank you, Lord. You have to see if certain foods aggravate certain tendencies in your body. Amen. Bless God. No matter how you bless your food. Amen. Presumption can kill you. Thank you, Jesus. If there are some things that you're... And you see, as you get older, as you get older... Your body begins to change and there are some things that your body has had enough of over the years. And your body begins to tell you. Your body begins to tell you. Listen, you have consumed enough of this over the years. It's time for you to change this diet. And so when you eat this stuff, you get an adverse reaction. Come on here. You get an adverse reaction. So you have to take some actions. Plus, 
you know is the same thing that has been affecting your parents, that affected your parents and took them to the grave. You saw is the same thing that killed, killed your grandmother, your grandfather, your great grandmother, your, great -grandmother, your aunts and so on. So you have to take action to defend yourself. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. So you know your health is a critical, critical, critical part. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen, amen. So when you are going on to do your exercise, when you are exercising, it's not just to be slim and trim. It's not just to put on these body-fitting things to make you look sexy when you're walking out on it. No, it is defending yourself against that too. That is part of what you're doing. Defending yourself. Amen. Take a little walk. Walk around the park. Walk around the, the field. Do something in defense. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let them just come in and take you just so you are putting up a fight in Jesus' name. Are you hearing? You are taking action. Let me tell you. Let me go further. Amen. So you have to do, you have to be aware of physically what you need to do. Exercise and all. Watch what you put in your body. If you know some stuff you put in your body giving you an adverse reaction, you have to take the necessary action. Are you there with me in Jesus' name? Amen. Don't allow people to put you in jeopardy neither. Amen. Bless God. I remember some years ago, a very good friend of mine, he loved fast cars. Love fast cars. Called me, said, boy, I have this car here and um, I want you to come, let's take a ride. Let me give you a demonstration. And I said, gone with myself, spiritual self and so on. And all of that stuff. And realize. When the, the speed that the man was going at. If anything was to happen. If anything was to happen. I know. I know. You're dead. You're dead. Then I asked myself. I said but what? I put in myself in jeopardy like this for? Knowing that death trying to kill me. Death looks for every opportunity. Death will try to take your life. Driving in a car at speeds that are unreasonable. Amen. Somebody said that, amen, that when you're, when you're driving above the speed limit, you're on your own. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. But the point is, the point is, you have to protect your life in such a way. Amen. That even people that are putting your life in jeopardy, you have to take action to make sure that will happen. Thank you, Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Bless God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hey, you have to try and avoid people putting your life in jeopardy. Don't let them drive you recklessly. Stop. Tell them stop and you come out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because that, that is defending yourself against death. And oftentimes, when people put your life in jeopardy, you end up dying and they end up living. You know? Amen. I don't know if you notice that in Jesus' name. So you have to take every action. Take every action. Let people call you hyper cautious. I know you know what you're doing. You know that you trying to make it up to three scores and ten, and by reason of strength, meaning dependent on how physically fit you are, you can make it over to eighty. So you have to defend yourself against premature death in Jesus' name. God, this is good preaching. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. Bless. Don't let nobody put your life in jeopardy. Don't let anybody put your life in jeopardy. Don't engage in activity that puts your life in jeopardy. Don't be reckless. Thank you, Lord. So I drive and sometimes there's a need for speed. And as I'm speeding, a voice say, what you're speeding for? <laughs> you understand? Amen. And, and when the voice speaks, I slow down. Because all of us, all of us, all of us who drive, some, most of us, I should say, who drive, there's a temptation to speed. Amen. If... Let us, if you are driving and it has rained, thank you, Lord, the road is wet. It is not reasonable. It is not sensible to speed on a wet day. It is not sensible to speed in general, except there is some situation that requires it. You understand? That is taking risks and giving the devil fuel to kill you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Amen. My brothers and sisters, you have to defend yourself against death. Amen. By your awareness and your action. In Jesus' name. Do what you, do what you could do. Exercise. Eat, eat well. Amen, amen, amen. I'm not talking hard so I could hear it myself. You understand what I'm saying? Change your regime. <laughs> amen. Change your regime. Change your regime. So that you could live longer. 
You understand what I'm saying? Because when you die, you know when you dies, and you know sometimes a man, man in general sense, man in generic, a man works, you know, you, 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 you do this, you set aside money, you build your house, and some stupidness happen. You die. You know, some fool can come after you <laughs> and take advantage of things that you work for. Right? Fool, some fool who have not worked as hard as you have worked, who have no appreciation for your labor, taking advantage and taking benefit of your hard work. The devil is a liar. Amen. The workman is worthy of his hire. The, 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 what's the, the husband man must be partaker of the fruit. Amen. Bless the Lord. I, I see somebody say, saying here, yeah, pork will kill you. Now, that's another conversation. Yeah? That is another conversation. Notice that I didn't. Notice that I didn't. <laughs> ah, Lord, Father. Amen. Bless God. Somebody will say you're blaspheming for that. Eh? Amen. But notice that I did not say. I did not categorize foods because there are different things that will affect different people. You understand what I'm saying? All I said is that you have to know what it is that affects your system and is not good for you and you'll stay away from that. So it is not, uh, and, I, and I know she doesn't, doesn't mean this, but it's not, it's not um, because there are some people, vegetables and so on affects them negatively. There are some people, meats affects them negatively, negatively and so on. So we're not, we're not categorizing food, but you have to know there are some people that are vegans, right? They are vegans and they, they criticize everybody that eat meat and all them kind of things. But that doesn't guarantee that you'll live longer than a person that eat meat. It is. It is an understanding of what agrees with your system and how your metabolism uh, works and so on. And that is the point I am making. Amen. So it's not beef, it's not pork, it's not chicken, and none of them kind of things. Eh? Amen. I want you all to understand that, right? You have to know what it is affects your system, what impacts you, and you make the take the actions accordingly in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So I don't want no controversy. I don't want nobody to write me no letter and say that you're anti-pork and all that kind of thing. Not me. In fact, because I am a man that eats pork myself. Amen. I bless my food and I eat my food. But I also have to be sensitive to what does not agree with my system anymore. For instance, and I'm going to tell you this too. God in his sovereignty and wisdom assists you to protect yourself when you don't have the information, when you're not sensitive to it. There are some things that you have eaten over the years as a young person coming in and then boom, just so, your system rejects it. You become allergic because your body the dynamics of this body, amen, bless God, kicks in. Your body is trying to protect you from potential danger because maybe something in the food now is killing you, is poisoning you gradually. So your body begins to put up all this defense. Listen, this human body is an amazing device. The device is not a good, it's an amazing, amazing structure. It has its own defenses that is come built in. And it tells you, all of us, most of us know, you could know when something ain't right. Something ain't right. When you start feeling a pain and you're not accustomed to pain, you know something ain't right. It is a single, it is a signal. It, 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 is, it is a, uh, what's the word? My word's not coming this morning. Amen. But a pain or a reaction is a spin-off, is a telltale sign that something is wrong somewhere. You understand what I'm saying? And that, is the, that speaks to the dynamics of the human body. In Jesus name. Amen. So <laughs> my brothers and sisters, <laughs> you have to try your best and defend yourself. Defend yourself by your awareness and your action. And amen. And your body will talk to you. Amen. Bless God. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> and listen, eh? let me say it again. Let me say it again. I do not think it is right for us to try to impose food regimes on people because it works for you. You hear me? I do not think it is right for you to try and impose your food regime on somebody else because it works for you. Note, understand that their body and body reaction is not like yours. Now, there are some general things that affects every human body. I mean, nobody should drink poison. No matter who you are, poison will kill everybody. You understand what I'm saying? But as it relates to foods and the preparation of foods and the, cons and the consumption thereof, 
Amen. It can vary from person to person. And not because you being a vegetarian is the greatest thing that's happened to you mean that you must start a religion on vegetarian and feel that everybody must join your vegetarian church. You have to, we have to be more careful and more broad-minded than that. Amen. Because that is not what it says. Okay? In fact, the scripture teaches different things. And I don't want to go off on no sensitive area here. But I personally have a problem with people who try to impose their diet on others. And then they try to use scripture to back it up. I'm saying to you that really, if you check the Old and New Testament, in the Old Dispensation, there were some things that God spoke to the children of Israel about that they should not eat for whatever reason. And he explained himself to them. Amen. In the new era, under the new dispensation, we see that Paul and these others have been teaching that, listen, that you consume what you consume. You bless your food. If your food is, 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 is a stumbling block, block to others, you consider that and all of that kind of stuff. Amen. You bless your food and you receive it with thanksgiving. You remember the analogy that God gave Peter when... Uh, when uh, in a vision, when he saw different things, you remember that different things, different foods and, and, and the voice told him kill and eat. And he said, no, because he came up in the Jewish tradition and there was some food that were not to eat. And then God said, man, you can't call nothing that God create unclean. You understand what I'm saying? You bless the thing and go ahead. The point I am making, the point I'm making with all of that, I don't want to go off in a theological discourse on these things, is that we should not impose our food regime on others who may not necessarily believe the way we do. All right? You have to be free to make the choice. However, wisdom dictates that if something is affecting you negatively, that common sense will kick in and you make a choice to do differently. That is all I'm trying to say. Okay? Bless the Lord. So, uh, we discuss the definition of um, debt. We discuss uh defending ourselves against debt and finally amen <laughs> we have to discuss yeah yeah showing yeah showing a man after my own heart yes uh the defeat of death the defeat of death amen when you read from verse um 44 in in, in first corinthians 15 you hear them talking progressively it is talking um about but what will happen that verse i quoted about what the Christians call the rapture. The road rapture does not exist in the scripture, but the, 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 the event itself, the way it takes place, it is uh, the word rapture became, became commonplace. Christ, the Lord himself, shall descend from heaven with the trump of God and the voice of an archangel. I think it's First Thessalonians, excuse me, where it is. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So there is going to be a resurrection taking place. We know that resurrection is possible because we've seen resurrection, you know, evidence. The dead in Christ shall rise first and then we that are alive shall be caught up to meet him. Now, there was a question about what kind of body will the persons that are resurrected and this new, uh, uh, and these people will have because the bodies that we have now are deteriorating they are dying bodies and so this is why they they expire at a certain time they have a they have a they have a they have a shelf life this body that you have have a shelf life okay but what is suggested in first Corinthians? when you start reading from and read it for yourself chapter 15 from verse 44 is that paul goes into a discourse and begins to describe that there are different bodies there are celestial bodies and there are terrestrial bodies and so on. And the glory of the bodies differ. What he's saying to them and the analogy is that when this resurrection and this new dispensation takes place, that the human beings will have a different kind of body. Amen. Bless God. It will be a body that cannot die. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Because the spirit of a man must exist in some kind of frame. It must exist in some kind of body. Amen. So what we are going to have is a terrestrial body. And we have a, a, kind, of, a, a, a kind of snapshot of it when Jesus was resurrected. You remember when Jesus was resurrected and so on. Amen. Bless God. The Bible said that he came through the walls. 
You understand the body, but it was a physical body because he told the disciples when they were saying, "We not choice you." And and Thomas said, "Lord, I really ain't believing all this small talk." And I had to chest that out. And Jesus said, "Come and push your hand in me. Push your hand." Remember that Jesus said, "Touch, touch the flesh and so on." So it was a physical big body, but it was a terrestrial body, but it cannot die. So what Jesus was saying, what Paul is saying now, is this is how death will be defeated when the rapture takes place. Okay, when Christ returns and there is a resurrection and those that are alive caught up, there will be an instantaneous transformation of the human body. Amen. To, to, uh, to appreciate and to, to be a part of this new dispensation and kingdom. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Bless God. So the rapture and the resurrection is what is going to defeat death. But that's when it says, death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Amen. The mortal shall put on in immortality. So there is no dying. Notice this. Bless God. The bodies that we will get in the, the hereafter are bodies that cannot be consumed. Amen. Both in heaven and in hell. I don't know that is another conversation. Because when they speak about the damnation in hell, notice that it is not damnation and then, you know, like you, 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 you go to a place where you, 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 your body is consumed. Notice that they said that you are in this place of damnation forever and ever. In order for you to do that, your physical body has to be able to sustain that. Which means that the body that you're getting in hell as well. In other words, simply put, to, in, to, to, to be a part of the kingdoms after this life. To, the afterlife requires a body that can appreciate the environment in which you spend it. Lord Jesus, help me here today. The afterlife, whether you spend it in hell or heaven, you will have a body that cannot die either place. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. We will, we, I, I, I know it may sound confusing, but it is not. The point is, we must appreciate that death is an enemy. He came to kill you and came to kill us and we must defend ourselves to the best of our ability. We must live and not die and declare the glory of the Lord in Jesus' mighty name. My brothers and sisters, the intention of this message this morning is not to bring contradiction or anything like that, but to alert you, amen, to alert you and to inspire you and to encourage you that you will live out your best life. Amen. We not we we can we are no control over death. When I say we are no control, death will will try its best and all of that. It don't mean that everybody will make it, but we we are alerted. We are alerted, so we will take every step that we can to live as long as we can in Jesus' name. And let me tell you this as I close: that is why, in your defense and protection of yourself, sometimes your spirit tips you up and tell you, "Don't go there." Don't go into that car. Don't go on that flight and all those kinds of things. Amen. Your spirit tips you off. Listen to your spirit. Listen to that voice that tells you stay home. Amen. Bless God. Because sometimes, amen, it's just go walking out in a particular place, being in a particular environment, and you become a victim of death. No, you're born again. You will be with, the, with, 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 with God, of course. You'll be in the kingdom of heaven. But I'm saying that your time can be cut short if death has its way with you. Amen. And there are some saying that there is no such thing as premature death, that when you die, dies your time. I don't subscribe to them thing because death is an enemy. They're trying to kill me. So I know I have to do the best that I could. Everything in my power doing. God knows when my time is, but I am not here saying, okay, my time is when I'm 50. So I'm going to just, you know, do everything. And, 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 and then when I'm 50, I just give up. No, 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 no. I want to make it to the threshold. The threshold that they say, at least 80. You understand? That is the threshold. And by reason of strength, I going on in Jesus' name. That is what I want. That is the point I'm trying to make. Okay? That is the point I'm trying to make. And I hope I'm not confusing you, but helping you in this discourse in Jesus' name. Let me pray for your Father. We give you thanks. And we give you praise for this time and this session. And it is our hope that it brings enlightenment to the listeners and viewers and that we can all prepare ourselves and live our lives to the best of our ability, protecting ourselves where we can in Jesus' name. 
bless your people bless the word in jesus name amen amen bless the lord and um you know we people die people die and um we 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 have to deal with that and so on but we must do our best to live we must do our best to live okay we must do our best to live in jesus name amen bless the lord and and our deepest condolences go out to the wife of my brother and friend brother jamie thomas keisha and the rest of the family the 107 family the entire christian community has been affected and i'm sure um you know tremendous hurt and and uh, at the loss but the lord will help us and and his grace will continue to cover us and and may, may may these things inspire us inspire us to live on i posted something yesterday and i will leave you with this um dr miles monroe in one of his many discourses did say that life is not necessarily measured in duration but rather by donation and i think soberly what is what the implication was is not so much how long you live but what you do while you are alive so either way you continue to do what you can be a blessing to your fellow men touch people's lives and if if by some stretch death manages to conquer you before you reach the threshold death must never have not known you you understand you must it must be said that you did enough for a lifetime with the life that you lived. Okay? God bless you. God bless you. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye. Peace. I'm gone. I love you.